Hey and welcome to YouTube, welcome back to a new video with Rams Fan YT. In today's video is going to be a history of your club. Uh, today we are in London looking at what was originally known as Clapton Orient but later became known as Leighton Orient and are currently on the top of the league at League 2. So Leighton Orient were originally formed by members of the Glynn Cricket Club in 1881 many of whom were former students of the independent college in Homerton in nearby Hackney. That's now Homerton Comet College in Cambridge. An annual fixture is still held between the club and the college, actually. The team has had several name changes since, first as Eagle Cricket Club in 1886, then as Orient Football Club in 1888. The 12 history books written by the, on the club by its historian Nielsen N. Kaufman between 19th and 4th 2015, so yes, that the choice of the name Orient came about at the behest of a player called Jack R. Deering, who was an employee of the Orient Steam Navigation Company, later part of P&O, Peninsula and Oriental. The club's name was changed again to Clapton Orient in 1898, to represent the area of London in which they played, though there was another team called Clapton, who is still in existence actually, um, to this day. Before their relegation in 2017, the O's were the second oldest league club in London behind Fulham and were the 24th oldest club currently playing in the Football League. Following Fulham's promotion to the Premier League, they became the oldest London club playing in the Football League, which they are now still are because Fulham are now in the Premier League at this time of speaking, so they are the oldest London club in the Football League. And they played in the second division of the Southern Federations League in 1904, and they joined the Football League in 1905. By this time, players such as the part-time outside right, Herbert Kingaby, could earn £2 for shillings, which is £200 approximately now per week, payment being somewhat sporadic though. The name Leighton Orient was adopted following the conclusion of the Second World War, as the club had moved to Leighton in 1937, though again there was another team called Leighton FC. A further rename back to simply Orient took place in 1966, after the borough of Leighton in Essex was absorbed into the London borough of Waltham Forest. That renaming followed a financial crisis, and one of several to hit the club, and by no means the first or the last. And restructuring of the company behind the club, this is remembering for a pass of a bucket collection that took place at a special meeting of supporters in the East End, when the complete closure was claimed to be a definite possibility. The club reverted to Leighton Orient in 1987, shortly after Tony Wood took over as chairman, and at a time when supporters' campaign was taking place in the Leighton Orienteer fanzine to reinstate the Leighton as part of the club's name. The 1914-15 season was the last football season before the league was suspended, due to the outbreak of the First World War. A total of 41 members of the Clapton Orient team and staff joined up into the 17th Battalion Middlesex Regiment, or the Footballers' Battalion, the highest of any football team in the country and the first to join up en masse. At the final game of the season, Clapton Orient vs Leicester Foss, now Leicester City, 20,000 people came out to support a team. The farewell parade was also hosted, but not before the O's had won 2-0. The British Film Institute holds a brief recording of this historic match between and the parade in its archives. And during the Battle of Somme, three players gave their lives for the King and Country, Richard McFadden, George Scott and William Jonas. Though they were the only Orient staff to have died during the First World War, many others sustained wounds, some more than once, and were not able to resume their football careers after the war. Prior to the First World War and whilst on a training run, O striker McFadden had saved the lives of two young boys who were drowning in the River Lee. This, only a week or so after rescuing a little girl from a house fire when walking through Clapton Park on his way to the O's ground. It is also documented that he dragged a man from a burning building prior to signing for the Orient. Fred Breyer, a super fan of the club, said, I feel sorry that we've been doing it terrible and I have no hope for the future. History was made on Saturday the 30th of April 1921 when the Prince of Wales, later become 
at King Edward VIII, visited Clapton Stadium or Millfield Road to see the O's play Notts County. The Orient won 3-0 and this was the first time a member of a royalty had attended a football league match. The royal visit was to show gratitude for Clapton Orient's patriotic example during the Great War and there is now a plaque erected on the site of a Millfield Road Stadium to commemorate this historic event. The story of a club's major involvement in the First World War has been told in a 2005 book entitled They Took the Lead by Stephen Jenkins, Deputy Chairman of Leighton Orient Supporters Club. In July 2006, Jenkins, assisted by Les Bailey, took part a party of 150 Leighton Orient supporters and members of the Leighton Manor Park Royal British Legion over to the Somme region of northern France to visit the World War I war graves and pay their respects at the resting places of Richard McFadden, William Jonas and George Scott. This was the first official visit to the Orient war graves for 90 years. A second visit to Somme took place in, at the weekend of the 12th and 13th of July 2008. This time 183 O supporters and members of the RBL made the historic pilgrimage. Chris Slegg, a BBC London reporter, travelled with a party and footage of a song trip was shown on local news bulletins. In August 2009, Steve Jenkins, along with a fellow O supporter, Theresa Burns, and former Orient player Peter Kitchen, launched the Osom Memorial Fund with the objective of uh, erecting a permanent memorial in northern France in honour of a Clapton Orient site that answered the call of king and country. A third trip to the Somme took place in July 2011 and the Osom Memorial was unveiled in the village of Fleurs on Sunday the 10th of July. Leighton Orient were a Division 3 South champions in the 1955-56 season and spent 20 of the next 25 years in the second division, before being relegated at the end of the 1981-82 season. They have not been back at that level since. Orient's golden years were in the 1960s and 1970s. In the 1961-62 season, Orient were promoted to the top tier of English football, the first division, now the Premier League, for the only time in their history. And after finishing second in Division 2 under the management of Johnny Carey, the team struggled in the top flight and were relegated after just one season. Nonetheless, they did defeat local rivals West Ham United at home. They were Division 3 champions in the 1969-70 season and spent the whole of the 1970s in Division 2. In 1972, Orient achieved one of the most famous results in their history, coming back from 2-0 down to the to de- there. Yeah to beat Chelsea 3-2 in the FA Cup fifth round. There was also an Anglo-Scottish Cup runners-up in 1976-77. In 1978, the Orient were defeated in the semi-final of the FA Cup, the furthest they had progressed in that competition. In 1978, the club was indirectly responsible for the album Variations, composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber for his brother, the cellist Julian Lloyd Webber. This reached number two in the pop albums and vari- album charts, uh, and variations came about as a result of a bet between the two brothers on the outcome of Orient's final game of the 1976-77 season against Hull City. In the 1980s, Leighton Orient fared less well after two relegations and then found themselves in the fourth tier of the English football system. However, they ended the decade on a high as they were promoted in the 1988-89 season, when under manager Frank Clark, they were promoted in the Division 4 playoff final after a 2 on aggregate victory over Wrexham. The early 1990s saw steady progress in the third division, missing out on a playoff place in the 1992-93 season on goal difference. However, the financial crisis at the club, caused by then-chairman Tony Wood losing his business in the Rwandan Civil War, led to a relegation back to the fourth tier, now renamed as the third division following the formation of the Premier League. Under manager Tommy Taylor, Orient were defeated in the 1999 and 2001 third division playoff finals, which were played at Wembley Stadium and the Millennium Stadium, respectively. The latter final saw the fastest ever playoff final goal scored to date at the Millennium Stadium, as Orient's Chris Tate scored after just 27 seconds. 
Warren's fastest ever goal was scored after just 12 seconds by Lee Steele in a match against his former club Oxford at the Kazan Stadium on 28th of March 2005. After the 2001 playoff final defeat, Leighton Orient took several years to recover from their second playoff final defeat in three years. After Tommy Taylor left the club, Paul Brush spent two unsuccessful years in charge after he was, and afterwards he was sacked. Former player Martin Ling took over as manager in October 2003, with Orient second bottom of the league. After several years of steady improvement, Leighton Orient gained promotion in the 2005-06 season, finishing in third place and getting automatic promotion to League One. This was the club's first automatic promotion in 36 years, and ended a period of 11 years in the English League's bottom division. This promotion season was also an excellent FA Cup run, with Leighton Orient progressing to the fourth round after beating Premiership side Fulham. Promotion was only secured in the final minutes of the final game of the season, away at Oxford United, with a score tied at 2 all and Orient seemingly destined to miss out yet again. News came through, though, of a late goal scored against promotion rivals Grimsby Town that would potentially promote Orient. Orient fans were still celebrating this when just 14 seconds later, Lee Steele scored to confirm Orient's promotion. The result also relegated Oxford to the Football Conference, and Grimsby's manager that season was Russell Slade, who would later become Orient's manager. In 2006-07, Orient endured a difficult season in the third tier, having spent most of the season in or and around the uh, relegation zone, and were at the bottom of the table several times during the first half of the season. An improvement in fortunes after Christmas, including memorable wins against Millwall, Tranmere Rovers, and a vital win against eventually relegated Bradford City near the end of the season, helped them finish in 20th place, one spot above relegation zone. Most of the 2006 promotion winning side left at the end of the season, and some players were released, and some declined new contracts at the club's longest serving player. Matthew Lockwood was re-signed, but then later moved on in pre-season to Nottingham Forest. 2007-8 was better as Orient finished 14th with 60 points and the O's began the season in fine form, not dropping out of the top 7 until after Christmas. However, a loss of form in the second half of the season, recording only 3 wins from the last 12 games, meant that the season ended in a respectable mid-table finish. Leighton Orient kicked off the 2008-9 season with a 2-1 win over Hereford United at home. Dean Beckwith put Hereford ahead before JJ Melligan and Adam Boyd gave Orient the win. Orient then continued the season with multiple poor results and performances throughout September and October, and their only wins were away at matches against Warsaw and Southend United in the Football League Trophy first round. However, Orient were knocked out of the trophy in the following round in an away match to Brighton and Hove Albion. They were in 22nd position in the League One table at the time, and Orient booked a place in the second round of the FA Cup after beating Colchester United 1-0. Two goals from Jason Dimitru and Danny Granville in a 1-2 away victory against Bradford City put Orient through to the third round of the FA Cup, where they played Sheffield United at home. They lost 4-1 after a bad a run of bad form in the league, Orient parted company with the manager Martin Ling and assistant Dean Smith. Youth team manager Kevin Nugent was named caretaker manager overseeing three games. On the 5th of February 2009, Geraint Williams was announced as manager until the end of the season. He enjoyed a very positive start, winning seven of his first nine matches and moving Orient up to 15th. After Jerry and Williams' positive influence on the team, they secured their League One status on the 13th of April with a 1 0 win over Swindon Town at the county ground and eventually finished the season in 14th place. Orient had a proud day when they beat former Premier League runners up Newcastle United 6 1 in a pre season friendly match on the 25th of July 2009. By beating Colchester United away in the first round of the Football League Cup, they earned a home second round fixture against Premier League club Stoke City. On the 3rd of April 2010, Geraint Williams was sacked as manager after a 3-1 home defeat to fellow relegation strugglers Hartlepool 
following a poor run of form. Kevin Nugent once again took control for the 2-1 defeat at Southampton in the, on the 5th of April, and after the match, Russell Slade was named as manager until the end of the season. With even less time to save Orient from relegation than Williams before him, Slade managed to bring about a change in form and saw Orient finish in 17th place, just one point but four places clear of relegation zone. In the summer of 2010, Slade's contract was extended for two years. After a poor start to the 2010-11 season, Orient's league form picked up towards Christmas, culminating in an 8-2 win against non-league Royalston in an FA Cup second round replay. In a game described as the weirdest football match ever, Orient had travelled most of the trailed most of the game 2 0 but scored six goals in extra time to progress into the third round. Orient then beat high flying championship side Norwich City 1 0 at Carrow Road, uh, Carra Road to progress into the fourth round, where they met another championship side, Swansea City at the Liberty Stadium. Orient beat Swansea 2-1 to set up a glamour fifth round tie against Premier League giants Arsenal at Brisbane Road, which finished one all, uh, one all draw thanks to a late Jonathan Tahore, Tahui, I don't know how I pronounce that, equaliser for the O's. This set up a replay of the Emirates Stadium, and Leighton Orient did lose that replay 5-0, bringing an end to their longest run in the FA Cup since 1981-82. Either side of the Arsenal games, Leighton Orient achieved a club record equaling 14 games unbeaten, putting the team just outside the playoff positions. However, they were unable to maintain that momentum and ultimately list out of the playoffs by just one point. The 2013-14 season saw more successful Orient, finishing third in the league and securing a place in the playoffs. They defeated Peterborough United to advance to the playoff final at Wembley, but lost the final to Rotherham United via a penalty shootout. The 2014-15 season saw a reversal of fortunes for the Orient, after the club was taken over by Italian businessman Francesco Bicetti. Long-standing manager Russell Slade left early in the season, and was replaced by caretaker manager Kevin Nugent. Yet again, followed in quick succession by Mauro Milanze and then Fabio Liberioni before Christmas 2014. A disastrous second half of the season meant that Orient were relegated from League One after a two-all draw at Swindon Town on the final day. Liberioni, with only eight wins and 27 matches, left the club by mutual consent on the 13th of May 2015. Orient finished one place but six points away from a League Two playoff place in the 2015-16 season. However, the following season, 2016-17, saw another disastrous slump under five different managers, as well as an off-pitch turmoil, including a winding-up hearing against Bicetti for unpaid taxes. Another managerial departure saw Daniel Webb resign from the club, with assistant manager Omar Riza taking over first-team duties until the end of the season. On the 22nd of April 2017, Orient were relegated to the National League after a 3-0 loss to Crew Alexandra, ending their 112-year stay in the Football League. Bicetti saw continued criticism for his own ship, which resulted in a pitch invasion and a protest against him on the 29th of April, resulting in the game being called off. On the 22nd of June, the club was officially sold to Nigel Travis, the chairman of Duncan Brands. After a poor start to the season, manager Steve Davis, appointed at the start of the National League campaign, was sacked on the 14th of November 2017 and was replaced by Justin Edinburgh. Under Edinburgh, the club fared better and spent much of the 2018-19 season competing for promotion from the National League. However, they were eliminated in the fourth round of qualifying for the 2018-19 FA Cup by Maidstone United. On the 27th of April 2019, following a 0-0 draw with Braintree Town, Orient secured promotion to League Two as champions of the National League after two years in non-league. The club also reached the final of the FA Trophy, but were defeated by AFC Fylde. On the 3rd of June 2019, manager Justin Edinburgh was admitted to hospital following a cardiac arrest. He died five years later at the relatively young age of 49. My... Uh, fairly recently of course so I saw the family is still grieving and my heart goes out to them. His assistant Ross Embleton was appointed as interim manager for the new season and Embleton was replaced by Carl Fletcher in October 2019 but Fletcher was sacked the following month after just five games in charge and Embleton was reinstated as interim boss. 
Embleton was appointed permanently in January 2020 on a 12-month rolling contract. Orient's first season back in League 2 produced a 17th place finish, with the final table ultimately being determined on a weighted points-per-game basis because of a football suspension due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Sure, in this time, the club furloughed, furloughed all players and staff to reduce the financial burden on the club due to the pandemic. The following season, the club finished in 11th place in League 2. Ross Embleton was sacked in February 2021 and was replaced by Joby McAnuff until the end of the season. In May 2021, Kenny Jackett was named as the new manager and Jackett was sacked in February 2022 and was replaced by Richie Wellens. And they're doing very well right now by all considerings. Uh, they look destined for promotion. I doubt they're going to get relegated this se- Well, not that. I doubt they're not going to get promoted, sorry, this season. Um, and yeah, I ultimately think Leeds Morning will be in League One this year. But thank you very much and bye for now.